Hello and welcome back. Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT has been one of Celestron's most popular models in their lineup for over a decade now. Now Celestron seems to move a couple thousand of these SLT models every single year as they range anywhere from about $400 up to almost $700. Now Celestron has taken the classic approach with the one arm fork mounted drive here. But the question is, what makes these things so special? Well, that's what we're here to find out. The Celestron SLT lineup composes of several different types of optical tubes. You can get a Newtonian reflector, you can get a refractor, or what I have here is the Maxu Top Cassegrain. Specifically, this is the 5 inch, the 127 millimeter Maxu Top Cassegrain. And what that means is that this is also the largest in the lineup, but also one of the most expensive. The other largest one is the 130 millimeter reflector telescope, which is again another 5 inch reflector. They're both relatively similar priced at about $699 for this. Now with this telescope though, the SLT stands for Star Locating Telescope, and it does exactly that. Once you do your sky align, you put any three targets in the eyepiece, or you just simply do a two star align like normal, like you would on any other Celestron mount, you will be able to locate any of the targets that you'll be able to see in that given night. Now the hand pad does house 42,000 objects, but believe me, set your expectations. You're not going to be able to see 42,000 targets with a telescope like this. Nor will even a camera see 42,000 targets with a telescope like this. Now this is a go-to mount, which means that once you do your star alignment, you find the target you want, it has two motors inside. And those two motors will drive the telescope electronically over to Saturn or whatever it is that you've selected in the hand pad. It will continue to track the target for as long as you want to observe that target. And then when you're ready, you just simply find a new target, press the enter button, and off to the races it goes to the next target for you. Now this telescope is a 5-inch Maxutop Cassegrain, but it's also the highest magnification capable in the SLT lineup. This has a 1500 millimeter focal length, which means at 5 inches it's about an f12, which means that when you put your high power eyepieces in here, you're quickly approaching 200 times magnification, which is great for viewing the moon and planets, as you can get really close and see those details up close and personal, especially things like Saturn's rings. This will easily pull in Saturn's rings, even with just the standard 25 millimeter eyepiece. So if you have something higher magnification, you'll definitely bring Saturn a lot closer to be able to observe more detail. Now this one arm fork mount has been kind of hit or miss on the models that I have tested over the years. I've had a few of these along the journey of my amateur astronomy lifestyle. And unfortunately, some of them work so-so. This one in particular, though, is absolutely fantastic. This one that I got is a winner. You can track the target for hours at a time. I left this out the other night on Vega because I went inside, made some dinner real quick, came back out about an hour and a half later, and Vega was still perfectly centered in that eyepiece. And I had a relatively high power eyepiece at a 15 millimeter in here and it kept it absolutely perfectly centered. So this one's a winner. If you get a really good one, they are fantastic. The tripod though is a little bit underwhelming. These tripods are kind of on pushing the weight limit for what these tripods can handle. This telescope tube is about five or six pounds. Then you have your fork arm, which is another couple pounds. So it's a little bit of a heavy mount to put on a little tripod like this. Can you do it? Absolutely. It is totally portable to take it out under the night sky if you're camping or something. It's the perfect grab and go rig for that. It does include a red dot finder, which of course is extremely helpful in aligning your telescope. You do have to make sure though, before you start observing each night, that that red dot is still in line by pointing your telescope at something like a tower that's off in the distance and making sure that both of them are relatively close so you can find the stars in your eyepiece relatively easily. Now this does have the latest version of Celestron's Nexstar Plus hand pad, which does have the USB user interface in it, which is great because you can control it then via your laptop or automated 
ways, such as ASI Air and other things like that. It does also feature an auxiliary port for things like the Star Sense Auto Align system. If you wanted to mount the Star Sense Auto Align, you can do that on one of these, and then it'll make it a fully robotic go-to system for you. You just flip the switch, let the camera do its job, and locate the night sky for you, and then you're ready to go. However, the Star Sense costs just about as much as the SLT costs, so I don't know that you'll be wanting to put in that kind of money just for something of this small aperture versus investing in something a lot larger, like an 8-inch or a 10-inch Dobsonian, which will give you way more light gathering ability, but for also less than a thousand bucks. I will give kudos to Celestron. The motor drives inside are all metal construction, which is something that not a lot of people do on the lower end telescope mounts like this. Things like the Ioptron Cube and some of the other one-arm fork mounts like Mead's Star Navigator are usually plastic nylon gears inside. Celestron has a nice large three and a half inch drive motor here with an all metal enclosure motor on both axes, which absolutely is a lot better for stability reasons. The motor drives in the Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT are super, super quiet. All of the SLT models do run off of eight AA batteries that are located here in the center compartment on this fork mount. Or you can also plug in a 12 volt plug here on the side if you have something like an external power tank or something off a lithium ion battery from Amazon or something. You can run off of that instead of using batteries. It is much better to run off of an external power supply just simply because you'll get a lot more power and a lot more performance out of the motors. As the batteries start to die, the tracking performance and everything kind of can go downhill. So that's your first indication that your batteries may be dying. All Celestron SLT models have a Vixen style dovetail here on the side. And that makes it easy that if you want to swap this optical tube out for something like a wide field refractor or a solar telescope, it's so easy. You just undo the clamp on the bottom, the optical tube slides right out, and you can swap the optical tube out. So overall, the Celestron 127 SLT and the other SLT lineups are really, really fantastic deals for anybody looking to get into amateur astronomy. I highly recommend one of these, and I'll be doing more videos with some photography with one of these, because I am curious if we can capture some really nice images with one of these. As always, stay tuned, subscribe for more content. I'll see you next time. Clear skies.